Learning and motivation are essential drivers of human behavior, both adaptive and pathological. My lab studies neural networks for motivation and how they influence what we learn. At the center of these networks are midbrain dopamine nuclei. These nuclei receive inputs from diverse brain regions and distill those inputs into simple signals broadcast widely to influence brain function. This enables dopamine to impact motivation, memory formation, action selection, and even volition. Like other labs, we've studied the dopamine system using external incentives to trigger motivation. But together with my postdocs, Jeff McInnes and Katie Dickerson, we began to think about how people motivate themselves daily without external incentives. We and others have long assumed that dopamine systems were involved, but no one had actually directly tested this idea. So in our study, we scanned participants using functional magnetic resonance imaging, and we asked them to generate motivating thoughts and imagery. The first very basic question that we asked was whether their intuitive strategies actually elevated activity within their midbrain, where dopamine neurons are located. Surprisingly, participants could not reliably activate their midbrain. Our second question was whether we could train participants to teach themselves to raise and sustain midbrain activation. Because the goal was to drive the dopamine system, the most direct method was to use midbrain activation itself as feedback to help guide them toward effective strategies. We compared this feedback training to baseline, resting trials, and counting backwards. During training, people did increase midbrain activation, but we expected that because feedback itself has been associated with dopamine responses. The critical result came next. When we removed the feedback and asked participants to motivate themselves using the strategies that worked best for them, they were able to consistently activate their own midbrain. These new results are remarkable for two reasons. First, people could learn and generalize from reward system neurofeedback training. And second, they were able to sustain midbrain activation without any rewards or reward cues. To test the specificity of these findings, we compared this neurofeedback group to two comparison groups and an alternate feedback group. The comparison groups also practiced generating motivational states with either noise that they believed was neurofeedback or with a simple repeating pattern. The alternate neurofeedback group received valid feedback from the nucleus accumbens. None of these other groups showed significant activation in target regions during the post-test. We refer to this ability to activate the midbrain using only thoughts and imagery as cognitive neurostimulation. Finally, we also looked at how midbrain neurofeedback training would affect neural networks more broadly. To do so, we use functional connectivity analyses. We examined changes in connectivity between the midbrain and nucleus accumbens, dorsal striatum, and the hippocampus, all of which received dopamine projections. During feedback training, we saw heightened connectivity between the midbrain and the striatum, which is essential to learning from feedback. In contrast, connectivity with the hippocampus, which is well known for its role in long-term memory, began during training and was also evident in the post-test. So, changes evident in the connectivity analyses suggest that dopamine networks are adapting during training. These results carry exciting basic science and translational implications. For basic science, it expands theories about dopamine systems and how they work. On the translational side, we may be able to use these insights to develop treatments for a wide range of psychiatric disorders because many involve problems with learning and motivation. Compared to pharmacotherapy or deep brain stimulation, cognitive neurostimulation could achieve some of the same benefits, but with greater temporal precision and fewer side effects. So this combination would yield safer and more efficient interventions with potential to improve education and enhance learning-based therapies.